Hi guys, I'm here today in my living room to film a library book haul. So apologies if this like colour combo is a little bit um, difficult to like watch. I'm not sure how this shows on camera. We haven't got, we've decorated the living room but we haven't like got all of our accessories out yet so it does look a little bit stark. But I do love the colour combo because it's like living October every day. So there we go. So I have a lot of books here and um, I basically reserved loads of books from the library. I think I've got 14 checked out. I've got five more I'm waiting for and hold. And I'm only allowed 15 books out at a time, so I need to start reading these really quickly so I can take some back in order to get the other five out. So it's not like I didn't already have enough books to read, but you know. Oh well. So firstly, the other day I went Christmas shopping with my mum. I say that I didn't buy anything other than two new tops for myself. Go me. So we popped in the library because I had to take a book back and while we were in there, obviously I had to really quickly browse. So I was super speedy because my mum was waiting. The YA section is on the bottom floor, which is where we were. So I was like, I'm just gonna have a quick look over there. Now, I historically have barely read any YA, but I read a couple this year I really enjoyed. Um, I really enjoyed The Miseducation of Cameron Post. I really enjoyed, what is it called? By Nina Lacour. I will put the cover up here something to do with okay but I don't remember so I really enjoyed that and I also have been enjoying the um, new fantasy series by Holly Black of which I have the third book to read really soon so just all those books made me think you know I, I really enjoy reading a book that quickly um, I don't read much genre fiction and so I tend to it takes me a while to get through books and actually reading books that I can read really fast reminded me of how wonderful that is to just inhale a book and be able to just sit for hours and finish one book in, in a sitting. Um, it's a really like joyful feeling so I decided I wanted to experience that a little bit more. So I picked up three books that day um, and I was just browsing super quickly so these are ones that I'd heard of so I didn't do loads of research to be honest. Um, this is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zapier. I've actually already read this one, I finished it yesterday. So this is about a um, young girl who, uh, go, she's in her senior year at high school, she doesn't really have any friends, um, she's really shy and socially awkward and she spends all of her time online so her only friends are people she's met on the internet. Unknowingly to everyone in her real life, she is the author of a famous and very successful webcomic. Um, so she makes a good deal of money out of it and she's planning on it being, you know, a big part of her, of her future career. And she's keeping all this really well hidden and then a new boy joins her school who it turns out is like a massive fanboy of her webcomic and things ensue from there. So yeah, I picked this one up because I'd seen people chat about it. And I enjoyed it, so I'm not going to say any more than that here because this isn't a review video and we'll be here all day. The other two I picked up were The Inexplicable Logic of My Life by Benjamin Alira Sands. And I have heard so many people talk about his first book, which is Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe. I haven't read that one either. Um, this was the only one the library had. I'm sure they have the other one, but someone else must have had it checked out. So I decided to pick this one up because... I feel like I could really enjoy his books. So this one is about a young guy who lives with his adoptive gay father and their loving Mexican American family and like everything is going well, but then something really unexpected happens and it changes him and his best friends from Samantha's lives forever. So yeah, don't really know what the hell is gonna go on in this book, but it sounds intriguing and I've heard really great things about him as an author. And the last one, is super celebrated on booktube and that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. She has a new book out I think called With the Fire on High which has a really beautiful cover which I'll put here. So if I enjoy this I will definitely get that one out as well. Um, so this is written in like slam poetry form so I am tempted to see if I can get this one on audio because I feel like I might be missing part of the experience by reading it in physical form. Let me know if you've read this and if so how did you experience it? Did you read it in physical form or did you listen to it? Um, I've never done it, like I've never listened to an audiobook whilst reading it, so I guess I could do that, but yeah, we shall see. I don't really know what this is about, to be honest. I know that it is something to do with slam poetry and a young girl who lives in Harlem. So yeah, there we go. And then I decided to reserve a few more YA books, but I actually decided to reserve some YA fantasy. As I said, I've been enjoying um, Holly Black books and, what's the message? And also something I've been thinking of a lot more recently is how YA fantasy seems to be doing so much better than adult fantasy with 
um, actually having representation of women in their stories, particularly as them being um, the lead characters or just having much more complex lives and experiences than they do in adult fantasy books. I love fantasy but I don't read a ton of it because I find so much of it just isn't the type of fantasy I like reading. Um, very male dominated, women usually get sexually assaulted in it, I'm just not into it. So I'm really excited about the fact that YA fantasy is so feels so heavily focused on um, women and I'm really hoping that as readers who are currently reading this and are of sort of the age category it's aimed at, as they grow up they'll be so used to reading um, female focused fantasy that's what they'll want as an adult reader and so that will force the publishers to buy more um, adult focused fantasy books. So fingers crossed. So I have a stack here. And this first one I've heard Jessica from Jessica Reads Things talk about the series a lot recently and how much she enjoys it and it's Three Dark Crowns by Kendare Blake. Um, this is about three sisters who um, are separated when they're like six years old and then when they get to I think 16 they're told that um, one of them has to kill the other two and then the one who survives will be queen. So that's how this goes down so I'm assuming it's going to be quite violent. I read the first few pages and I really enjoyed the tone so looking forward to that one. Another one I've heard a few people talk about, again the first book in a series, is The Star Touched Queen by Roshani Chukshi. probably butchered that. This is about a young girl who's hoping she isn't going to be forced to marry and she instead wants to follow scholarly pursuits but then her father arranges like a political marriage for her. I think it actually goes well and she does fall in love with her husband but then she starts to find out lots of things about the, the new kingdom that she's living in, like lots of secrets and a mystery ensues. I don't know how fantasy this will be. I think this may be a little bit more romance heavy but I, I couldn't quite tell from the description so I'm intrigued to find out. And then this one is Labyrinth Lost by Sereda Cordova. I heard loads of people talk about this one recently. I watched a lot of people do TBRs for um, Latinx or Hispanic Heritage Month um, and I heard this mentioned quite a few times. I think the second book is already out so um, I'm very much intrigued by this one because I feel like it's, I'm not going to be used to the sort of mythology it's based around because so much um, fantasy both in YA and adult fiction is focused around like um, your standard like um, British medieval tropes. So this is set around a young girl who is a Bruja which means the most powerful witch in the generation but she hates magic. So at her death day celebration she performs a spell to rid herself of her power but it backfires and her whole family vanishes. So she has to travel with this guy she doesn't like to try to save her family. So there's that one. And then this last one is so beautiful. So if I enjoy this, I think I'll have to buy myself a copy. Um, I haven't read any of this author's books, which is one of those silly things because I'm sure I could really love her work. And um, that's The Deathless Girls by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I mean, this is just so stunning. I love this snake up here, how it's sort of like pinky, but also sort of not. Um, and the inside is stunning. You can't see it brilliantly well, but it has um, all these mushrooms and then these um, towers that also look like thorns. It's just absolutely beautifully designed. So my understanding is this is about like vampires wives, I think. Um, yeah, and you follow two sisters and yeah, that, that's what, that, that isn't what it's on the inside about them being like Dracula's brides, but I'm sure that's what I've heard. Um, and I think this has a queer romance in it, which I'm always up for. So yeah, I'm hoping to love this one and then pick up more of her books because I just feel like she could be an author I really enjoy. So I think those are all the YA books I have. Although um, I'm just going to have a sip of my, my tea, which I won't make you watch, but I do just want to show you this mug because it's absolutely freaking adorable. Um, and as much as possible I try and make sure this is always washed up so I can always drink out of it because I love it. Okay, so I have like seven non-fiction books and the first few are memoirs. Um, so this one is Heavy, an American memoir by Kisei Lemon. Uh, I've meant to read this, read this since it came out a couple of years ago. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it. Um, he's such a celebrated author and I've also wanted to read his novel. I think it's called Long Division, yes. Um, for quite a while so I'm hoping to really enjoy this one and then go back and read his novel. I'm just going to read you a little bit from the dust jacket because it describes it way better than I can. So it says he grew up a hard-headed black son to a complicated and brilliant black mother in Jackson, Mississippi. 
From his earliest experiences of sexual violence to his suspension from college to his career as a young college professor, Lehman charts his complex relationship with his mother, grandmother, abuse, anorexia, obesity, sex, writing, and ultimately gambling. It says this is a defiant yet vulnerable memoir that he started writing when he was 11. So yeah, I, I just really think I could love this one. So there's that. And then we have Once Upon a Time in the East. Oh God, I should have looked at Palisades author's name. I hate myself when I don't do this. So I'm going to try it here because I think I should at least try. And then once I've read it, I will actually look it up and do a proper pronunciation. Um, Exhalo Guao. That's just awful, isn't it? So it says that she was born in 1973 and her parents handed her over to a childless peasant couple in the mountains. Um, they left her behind in a fishing village with her grandparents on the East China Sea. It says, Once Upon a Time in the East takes her from a rundown shack in China to a brave new life in Britain. Her tale of East to West resonates with the insight that can only come from someone who is both an outsider and at home. And again, I had nothing but amazing things about this one. It has really great reviews on Goodreads um, and I feel like I could really enjoy it. This last one I heard Shan talk about on her channel, Shani Reads. Um, and it's not the sort of memoir I usually pick up because, um, firstly, it's by a white man, which isn't something I tend to read. Um, and secondly, it's by an author who I don't know anything about. So this is I Will Be Complete by Glenn David Gold. And I think he wrote the book, is it called When Carter Beats the Devil? Should know that, shouldn't I? Doesn't say. I think that's what it's called. Um, so I feel like maybe you're supposed to read this book if you really like him as an author. And um, I just really love the sound of it. So I decided to pick it up. Um, it says he was raised rich in Southern California before his father lost a fortune and his parents divorced. Um, he grew up with his increasingly wild and self-destructive mother amid con men and hedonists in 1970s San Francisco. When he was 12, his mother took off to New York without telling him it was time he decided to rescue himself. So yeah, this is a bit chunkier than the others. Um, it's like 500 pages. It's got quite small font. So I'm intrigued. I think I'll read a chapter or so to see if I like the writing style. But like I said, this isn't the sort of thing I'd usually read. But I just want to get way more into memoir and actually his life itself sounded like something I could be really interested in. So there's that. And then I have a few more to show you. Um, so this one I stumbled across just when I was browsing online. And this is a bound woman is a dangerous thing. The incarceration of African American women from Harriet Tubman to Sandra Bland by Damaris B. Hill. So I just reserved it and I didn't know anything about it. Um, I opened it when I got it home yesterday and actually it's not quite what I expected. So you get a photo of a woman, you get a small description about her life and then it looks like you get poems that are dedicated to her written by the author. So I don't read a lot of poetry. Um, I'm gonna give this a go because I'd really like to learn more about these women. Um, I guess I was hoping there'd be more information in there whereas I feel like you're being told it in this poetic form which may not work for me, but we shall see. So there's that one. Then I have how to be an anti-racist by Ibram X. Kendi. I read his book, um, Stand from the Beginning, a history of racist ideas in America, or was it around the world? Um, massive book, quite academic. I learned a lot from it, I definitely recommend it. So as soon as I heard he had another book coming out, I thought I'd give it a go. This book sounds like it's probably gonna be a bit easier to read. Um, it says he shows that when it comes to racism and neutrality is not an option, until we become part of the solution, we can only be part of the problem. So I think this book is more of a directive of like what you can do um, and like real life situations. The other book was, like I said, very academic. So I feel like though it wasn't super emotive. Um, every now and again, he'd give you his opinion, but um, at the most he held himself from a distance most of the time. So I'm hoping this will um, like be closer to the more um, emotive parts of that book, which I really enjoyed. So there was that. And then we have What My Mother and I Don't Talk About, 15 Writers Break the Silence. This is edited by Michelle Philgate. Um, and I had a little look, and a lot of the authors I haven't heard of, some I have. Um, so we have Alexander Chi, Bernice R. McFadden, um, Kise Lehmann, Carmen Maria Machado, Andre Ackerman, and Leslie Jameson. They're all the people I've heard of and all the other people I haven't. So, and I don't know if I've read any of their works, perhaps not. 
I find this sort of thing fascinating. Um, essay collections are always difficult because some people's voices will resonate with you and some people's won't. But um, in general, I'm hoping that I'll really enjoy this one. It, I find it a fascinating topic. I think people's relationships with their mothers are probably the, one of the most complicated relationships they'll have in their, in their entire lives. Very fraught relationships. And I'm very interested to um, read these topics. It says they range from like really dark, difficult topics to things that um, sit more at the surface and are just not discussed. So um, interested to see what they're like. And then the last one I have, I've meant to read for quite a while now. This is an Indigenous People's History of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. Um, there's loads of books like this. Um, this is one of the only ones that is actually written from um, a Native American person's perspective, which I think is really important because I think it's important they tell their own story. So um, it says, Today in the United States there are more than 500 federally recognised indigenous nations comprising nearly 3 million people, descendants of the 15 million native peoples who once inhabited this land. The centuries-long genocidal programme of the US settler colonial regimen has largely been omitted from history. Now, for the first time, acclaimed historian and activist Roxanne Dunbar-Ortiz offers a history of the United States told from the perspective of indigenous peoples and reveals how Native Americans for centuries actively resisted expansion of the US empire. So, yeah, I mean, this is the sort of thing that I absolutely, I say love to read. It's a horrible thing to read about. It's absolutely despicable that this sort of stuff ever happened and continues to happen. But I think it's so important to acknowledge and to know about and to not turn away from. So I would like to know more about it. So there's that one. So those are all the books I currently have out from the library. Please let me know if you've read any of these. Please feel free to give me recommendations. I mean, these are for completely vastly different types of books, but I'd love recommendations for either all the fantasy stuff I was talking about or all the non-fiction stuff I was talking about because I feel like I'm really into both these things at the moment and hoping to um, feel that way for, for a you know, significant period of time. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.